This is the Neo Geo MVSX, an officially licensed three-quarter scale home arcade from SNK that is made and manufactured by a separate company called Unico. This arcade is a hybrid bar top arcade that you can either leave as is or place it on a bar or countertop somewhere, or for an additional $100, you can get a separate base stand that matches the aesthetics of this arcade and raises the machine up to a more traditional standing height for players to enjoy. Now, there was not a stand available at the time to include in this early preview of this cabinet. However, after some ghetto engineering, I've got this machine sitting atop a table that is exactly 32 inches high, thus replicating what this machine would look like if it was sitting on the optional base stand that is sold separately. Being that this machine is effectively another three-quarter scale home arcade, it's only natural that I would show you what this looks like next to an arcade 1UP machine on a riser. And as you can see, both machines scale very well together. And if you're a Neo Geo arcade fan and already own some of the arcade 1UP machines, then you would likely be right at home adding this machine into your collection. You'll notice where the arcade 1UP machines are about 75% cabinet, 25% riser, the MVSX is essentially the opposite, since it's a bar top machine resting atop a large base stand instead. However, unlike the arcade 1UP cabinets, there is no assembly required on this main arcade unit. It comes pre-assembled and all you need to do to get started gaming is simply connect the included power supply to the back of the unit to power it on. Standard features on this arcade are an illuminated marquee resting up top, and I'm really happy with how this looks. There's no light bleed around the edges or corners, and the marquee graphic itself looks good without any overly washed out images. A 17 inch LCD screen with a plain black bezel will be your main focal point while you're gaming, and the screen used here is of good quality and I was really happy with the viewing angles it provides. Two Sanwa clone joysticks and some generic buttons, of which you'll notice there are six buttons here instead of the traditional four buttons we've come to expect on Neo Geo arcades, though most arcade enthusiasts will likely want to replace these joysticks and buttons with something of their own preference. They're more than suitable for most casual players. While the inclusion of these two additional buttons will no doubt come in handy once the inevitable happens and owners can begin to add their own games to this unit, whether that be from official or unofficial means, either way, the internet always finds a way. Towards the back of the control deck, we get a few player start buttons, as well as some menu and navigational buttons, and you'll also notice there are two LED display counters. The leftmost counter simply shows what section of the pre-organized game library you're on, while the secondary LED displays how many games are in that said game section. Nice little nods to the original coin counting displays found on the OG MVS Neo Geo arcade cabinets of yesteryear. Now in the right hand corner we also have the volume dial allowing you to adjust the sound input levels coming out of the stereo speakers hidden behind the front panel of this unit. The speakers actually sounded better than I was anticipating, but audiophiles out there are surely going to want to upgrade these speakers in my opinion. There is also a mini coin door on the center front panel of this unit, and it's not a functional coin door, but it is recessed into the wood panel, meaning that even if you wanted to remove this non-functional panel, you wouldn't be able to without having to plug that hole and do some repainting, and honestly, it would be an absolute nightmare to try to get rid of this. Personally, the whole front panel is something I wish would have been redesigned entirely. I would have much rather seen the speakers moved up underneath the lit marquee, and the mini coin door removed altogether. Since the optional base stand also has a faux coin door on it, I find it redundant to have two separate non-working coin mechanisms on this machine, and I would have much preferred just a plain, sleek black front panel. Now the only stipulation or restriction I was given for doing this review was that I couldn't open this unit and show you what it's running on inside. And honestly, that doesn't really bother me a bit because quite frankly, I don't care if it's a hamster on a wheel running this machine just so long as the games play smoothly. And well, of course, that somebody gives that hamster some food and water because honestly, let's, let's be decent human beings, come on. So let's talk about the games, 50 built-in titles from the famous Neo Geo library, touching on a few gaming genres. You got beat-em-ups, you got platformers, sports titles, and you got fighters. And I mean a lot of fighters. And depending on your affinity for fighting games, that may be a deal breaker for you as the included game lineup is basically composed of over 60% fighting games in total. Game performance was on par with what I expected with, being that it's emulation, Honestly, none of these games are particularly hard or demanding to run in terms of emulation, so whatever hamster is inside running this machine, it's doing a really good job. 
There is a USB port on the back of the machine that allows for firmware updates, of which this unit has already received one that allows for the game violence to be toggled on and off, so now you'll be able to see those colorful red blood splatters in games like Metal Slug and Samurai Showdown. And like I mentioned before, that USB port is also no doubt going to be the gateway to adding additional games to this machine in the future, so keep that in mind if you're turned off by the fighting-centric game lineup found on this machine. There are several game options available to the players as well, allowing you to save and load gameplay states, adjust your control input configurations, or toggle on the various different image settings for things like scan lines to give that LCD display a classic CRT look while you're playing. The main user interface on this machine has a simplistic design with no obnoxious animations or crazy sound effects going on in the background, just a clean and easy to navigate menu system that anyone can understand. Global settings can be accessed by selecting the gear icon which brings up a menu allowing you to make changes to the game such as language, game mode, going back and forth from AES to MVS versions of these games, and once again the scan line settings. The final option allows you to see which firmware version your machine is currently operating on and if necessary, allows you to perform a factory reset on the firmware for the machine itself. So you can see we have some custom artwork down here in the form of a signature. That's because there are a few of these sample machines floating around the states right now and at each stop the reviewing party has been asked to sign their name on the machine because at the end of their review tour these machines are going to be auctioned off for charity with the proceeds going to Children's Mercy. Now given that my actual day job is in the medical field and I've actually personally worked with Children's Mercy in the past, I can tell you from personal experience that there's no better place for your charitable dollars to go and I'm very happy to have a very small part in this charitable organization and donation program with the MVSX cabinet. At the end of the day, the MVSX is a good option, albeit an expensive option, for Neo Geo fans who want an arcade experience in their home that doesn't take up a large footprint and can likely mesh well with their existing collection of arcade 1UP cabinets. The MVSX comes priced in at $449 retail for the bar top version you see here, or the bundle package that includes the base stand is priced at $499, and again, the base stand sold separately is $99. And seeing as how the arcade 1UP cabinets have now started to price themselves at around the $400 to $500 mark, depending on the options you get, and typically only include a small handful of games, it's not hard to see the value of the MVSX, seeing as how it has 50 included games and the hint of even more games being potentially available to you later down the line. Pre-orders are available now through the official website and on Amazon with an estimated ship date of November. Now, if you've watched this entire review video and you're thinking to yourself, oh man, I love me some Neo Geo, but not for $500, that's perfectly fine. There's still other great options out there. You could go for something like this. The Neo Geo Mini has a lot of the same games that's built into the MVSX and can currently be found for about $50. Or you could spend a little extra and go for something like the Neo Geo Arcade Stick Pro and have that more authentic arcade experience. Point being, we're currently living in a retro renaissance. With Neo Geo games being now more accessible than ever, I for one am very happy to see the MVSX doing its part to revitalize the glory days of the Big Red Machine. That does it for today's video, I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did, make sure you hit that like button, share this video with your friends if you found the information helpful, and as always, thanks for watching guys, it really means a lot.